In this episode, we're gonna play around with AM charts and high charts, two JavaScript libraries for rendering stock charts onto your HTML pages. We're gonna show how to install them with Rails in using Webpacker and NPM, and we'll experiment with some of the demos that they have just to get them on the page to help us decide between which one of these final contenders we will use for our stock chart display. Now, if you're following along, you'll know that in a previous episode, we uh, talked about how to pick between third-party libraries and we evaluated four or five different stock chart libraries and we landed on AM charts and high charts as the final contender. So this episode is all about how to install them and play around with them. So um, we'll start with AM charts here and you'll see that it has like uh, an NPM install tool, uh, which allows you to install AM charts for, but also geodata and fonts. I, I see here that font files are used for PDFs, so I don't actually need that. I'm not gonna render PDFs. Uh, and then geodata is for maps, don't care about maps. So I really should just be able to say npm install am charts, uh, am charts for here. So I, uh, this is the directory in which um, my Rails application lives. And I think the very first thing we wanna do is just say like Rails webpacker colon install. Uh, this will install the webpacker tools for working with Rails. Uh, and it does require that you have a node version, which is, uh, <laughs> over 10.17. My globally installed node version is, um, yeah, 10.16. 10, so I'm gonna use node env to set my local node version to 14.15.1. And now I should be able to rerun Rails Webpacker install. If you have, uh, if you run into the instance or the scenario where you need to have multiple versions of node installed, uh, which is pretty common, then I, I do like working with node env and I would recommend it. Uh, for managing different uh, node versions. The, one of the reasons why I really like it is that the API, like the, the command line interface for working with node env is very similar to rbenv or rb ruby env, uh, which is the, the environment manager or the ruby, the ruby version manager that I prefer. So it's nice to have both of those with the same sort of, um, or like a very, very similar interface. Okay, it does take a little bit for Webpacker to set up. All right, now that we've got Webpacker installed, the next step is to install a library. So we're gonna just say npm install, which copy this command here and run it. I think you could also do dash dash save if you want this to end up in the um, package.json file that's in the root of the project. And while that's installing, let's go take a look and see if we can find some demos here for how to use this. So we'll go to the demos page and we care about stock charts. We'll just grab the first stock chart here. Down below, it shows JavaScript or TypeScript ES6. Because we're using Webpacker, I believe we can use this import style and we'll just create a new pack, a new JavaScript pack that has all of this code. So I'm actually just gonna copy the entire thing and just uh, dump that into a new pack file. Okay, this is still going. Come on, NPM, <laughs> let's go. All right, so I have, a, I have another terminal here where I'm gonna start up a Rails server. And I'm also gonna start up a bin webpack dev server, which will like reload and refresh our webpacker. Um, I forget what they're called. It's like the manifest, the webpack manifest. So now it's just like, it's gonna find um, files in slash packs. So we'll go create a new JavaScript file called uh, amcharts.js and we will load that as a pack. Uh, okay, cool. So that finished. So we're gonna go into app JavaScripts packs and inside of here, we're gonna create a new pack called amcharts.js and we're just gonna paste in all of the code we have here in this demo. Now this should work because we just installed these two uh, these two tools um, and it looks like, yeah, so I don't, it doesn't really show us any HTML in this demo maybe. Yeah, so there's no HTML, it just shows you kind of like that source code. So let's see what we can do with this. So where's this actually gonna show up? Like we, at this point we have a brand new Rails app, we have a job, we have a model, but we don't have any views. <laughs> so it's gonna have, we have a default view, but we're not actually like loading any views. So let's generate a controller just so we have some views. So we'll say Rails G controller charts, and we'll just have an index view to start with. So charts index.html. 
Uh, and in charts index.html, we want to put a pack tag, and I can't remember the exact syntax, but there's one in the layout file or in this like application HTML ERB that shows how to install the JavaScript pack. So it's the this we call this Ruby method JavaScript pack tag, and then you give it the name of the pack. So in this case, uh, am charts, right? And um, in our routes file, we should have, okay, get charts index. We can say resources charts, and we'll just see if that works. So now if we fire up localhost 3000 slash charts, it should load. Okay, so webpacker can't find AM charts. Let's see if that's what we actually named it. So we go into JavaScript packs AM charts. That's definitely what it's called. Let's see if we need to restart the Webpack dev server because we added a new file. I don't know if that's required. Um, let's see if we refresh. Yeah, so Webpack output is served from slash packs. Okay, um, maybe it's still trying to figure that out. Let's see. So it says this is what the manifest contains. So yeah, we do want it to rebuild, sort of rebuild the manifest. So it seems like it has not, yeah, Webpack has not yet rerun to reflect the updates. Okay, cool. So it looks like a bunch of stuff was just spit out here, um, which all looks somewhat relevant. And if we refresh the page, okay, great. So now we see charts. I'm gonna open up the terminal and see if we have any errors. And it looks like we do. AM4 plugins range selector is not defined. Okay, so this one used at the very, bottom, add a range selector, AM4 plugins range selector is not defined. So uh, I don't know what the, this range selector thing is. I'm guessing that it needed to be imported, but just wasn't, or maybe it's not available as part of core or as part of charts. Right now, I really don't care too much. I'm just gonna comment it out and see if we're able to fix it from that. Okay, HTML container chart div was not found. So we probably need to create some sort of chart div container. I'm guessing that has like, that's like the ID or something, charts, HTML. Um, maybe we need a div here with ID, what was it called? Chart div. So that's probably where it's gonna like mount into, I would guess. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we have something. We have something on the screen. This is cool. All right, so that's, that's how you install AM charts into a Rails application. Uh, now, uh, okay, so we could go and play around with all of this stuff, um, all of these different settings to get it looking the way that we want. Uh, but I think we're gonna call it good there and move on to part two, which is we wanna install high charts and see if we can get high charts working in a similar way. And then we'll kind of like play around with, play around with high charts also. Um, so, Couple things we needed to change. We needed to remove this bottom uh, select range selector, and then we also needed to add um, a chart div. Neither of which were super clear from just like copying and pasting the code. I bet there's probably some more detail here potentially. Do do do. It actually doesn't, huh? But I guess in the JavaScript version they show you some style okay so i bet i bet if we like put this style in too it ends up looking a little better let's see yeah okay so that looks so much prettier right but like they didn't include that in the typescript es6 version and okay so here's another one right here's the plugin that's loaded from the cdn version in javascript but not it didn't show you that in uh in the typescript es6 version Oh, look at that here at the bottom. <laughs> we have uh, a div, uh, so, so it has some HTML. So it would, I guess my feedback to the AM charts team would be, let's update this snippet so that it has uh, this HTML and that it has this style stuff so that it ends up looking just as nice when we do it with um, TypeScript or ES6. Okay, so let's move on to high charts and take a look. So if we split this now, let's uh, let's actually create a new view. So we'll go into a charts controller and we'll just call, uh, we'll call this one like, uh, we'll just use the show page. This is, we're like really abusing uh, index and show, uh, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> okay, 
so in the show view, we're going to have a pack tag that's like high charts. And then we'll create a pack called highcharts.js. And what does this look like? So high charts we can also install with NPM. So we'll do that now. Okay. And while that's installing, let's take a look at their demos. So stock demos, that's the one that we care about. And the one I'm particularly interested in is having these flags or whatever the, the event markers. So if we look at, what is this? Okay, so this is the, all the code to get it running or it's a config preview. It doesn't actually tell you. All right, so we can edit either in JS Fiddle or CodePen, that's pretty cool. And I'm guessing this is just different like themes maybe. Yeah, okay, so you can have a really dark or a textured background or a light grid. The default is fine. We just wanna like see if, it, see if we can get it working. So let's open up JS Fiddle. Okay, this one does give us some HTML and it gives us some JavaScript. So we'll copy this HTML tag here and we wanna to go to the show page and let's see. So we're gonna say that's our HTML. And then for our JavaScript, just copy all of this and go to our pack for high charts and just paste everything in. And high charts is not gonna be defined because we haven't imported it. So because we're using NPM and we're not using the CDN here, we need to figure out how this generally is imported or where it's imported from. So when we were looking at Okay, uh, the official NPM package, read more about how to install high charts with NPM. Okay, load high charts with require. Uh, we're not gonna use require, but let's just see if we can use uh, import. Import high charts from, and then this high charts slash high chart or high stock. Let's see. All right, so if we refresh the page here, oh, we wanna go to charts slash one or something. Okay, webpacker can't find high charts. We added a new pack file, so let's restart our webpack dev server. And, oh, that's gonna take a second again to refresh. I don't know why webpack takes so long. Like when we're working with create react app or something, it's super fast, right? Okay, uncaught type error, high charts, high stock, webpack imported module, default A, that get, <laughs> get JSON is not a function. Let's take a look. Okay, so it looks like the high charts library is supposed to expose some function called get JSON, which takes in a path and presumably returns the JSON for this path. Let's just see what happens if we go directly to this. Okay. So the, the data that comes back from this URL is just like a, some JSON data that is a, an array of tuples where I'm guessing this is like a timestamp. Yeah, it's probably a date. Yeah, okay, so 2007.01, 2007.01.02. So these are like uh, Unix timestamps that are in some fancy format that has three extra zeros. Uh, okay, so uh, so really what we need to do is we need to fetch this JSON data and then we need to pass it down into high chart stock stuff. So let's see, high chart, or let's just add a breakpoint and then refresh the page. Is this actually getting imported? High charts. Okay, so because we're using um, Webpacker, we don't actually, like the name of the variable that's available is not actually the name that's here. It gets renamed to this imported module situation. And if we did like dot, uh, what's another method that's called here? I guess stock chart, yeah, okay. So theoretically, as long as we get this JSON back, we should be able to pass that data down. I don't know why this is saying that get JSON doesn't exist, but it doesn't really matter because yeah, it doesn't, okay. So let's use fetch. So we can use the fetch API and pass in this same URL. And then let's see. So before it was saying like, once the JSON resolves, call the variable data. So that might be interesting or important. Since we're using fetch, we wanna say dot then and 
we want to convert the response into JSON. And we can use a wait here because this is an async thing. And we're going to say the data is equal to await fetch, go fetch that data. Now, because I'm using a wait at the top level here, it's not inside of an async function. I'm going to have to wrap this whole thing. I saw a proposal. I think it was a proposal. I don't know if this is available anywhere, but you can do like async do, async do, and then a block like this. Um, I don't think this is available anywhere, but let's just try it out and see. Uh, exploded. Yeah, okay. I don't think it's I don't think it's out yet, but there's a proposal for this async do. Let's just take a little sidebar. Async do. It was like I saw like a GitHub page recently where async do proposal TC39. It's gonna be like a new JavaScript. Here we go. Check this out. This is gonna be like a new, or it's a it's a proposal for a new JavaScript concept where you can like use async do, then you pass it a block, and then you can do await stuff inside. Because the alternative is that here, we're going to have to write an, uh, an immediately invoked function expression, which, uh, which looks something like that. And then we can just make it an async one. <laughs> so it's an, uh, an async immediately invoked function expression purely so that we can use await at the top level, which is like sort of annoying and not helpful. But I think this might work. So we should, we're, we're expecting we're going to get some data back from this. So let's refresh the page. Let's move our breakpoint down a little bit and then step over, over, play. What are we getting? Oh my gosh, look at that. Beautiful. It's already there. And we've got the events hovering over it, event with description. This is, it's so nice. Gosh. Okay. So, oh yeah, look at this. It's even animated. Look, one year, boom. It like, animates down. Okay, I think I'm pretty sure. Well, let's take a look back at AM charts and see. Yeah, this one. Okay, so it takes this one took a little bit longer to load. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so this one animates also. Wow. All right, so the trade offs here are that high charts didn't the get JSON method on high charts didn't work. The range selector on AM charts didn't work. The AM charts TypeScript version didn't show how to add the HTML or that the HTML was required. The high charts version um, shows this really old school way of doing NPM install instead of like, you know, importing an import statement. Um, the high charts demo came with flags already, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I think at this point, it's clear that I'm just going to pick high charts uh, and we'll go with that to display our company prices. And uh, as we have trades, like the idea would be that, okay, we're looking at this, this chart uh, and this might be the, the chart for PagerDuty or for Microsoft or something, right? Like, and we want to see when insiders traded, which we'll we'll be able to find that information directly through the SEC's public data sources. And then we'll just sort of like map that information onto this chart. So that's what we'll do in a future episode. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one where we're going to uh, actually take some real data from the database and plop it on this chart. All right. Thanks so much for watching.